Well, going to uh, do a video here talking about Hibex. And <laughs> this is in no way, just a little disclaimer here, this is in no way uh, sponsored. I have not been paid by anybody, I've not been given anything uh, that would uh, make my opinion biased. This is just purely my opinion based off of my experience or our experience here feeding horses and uh, how that goes and why it goes the way it is. Um, for one and for two, I gotta admit, I'm not here to advocate hay bags. I actually just hate them. I hate using them. They drive me nuts. If I didn't have to use hay bags, I would not use hay bags ever. Uh, but that said, they're a great option for what um, we need to do, which is feed the horses in the environments that we're feeding them in. So keeping in mind that uh, it's, it's not like uh, we can get away from hay bags with the way that we're housing or, or the husbandry that we, that we practice here and in many places uh, for the horses. So those two things out of the way, not sponsored. I hate hay bags. Honestly, if I never had to use one ever again for the rest of my life, I never ever would, uh, but we do. So we gotta make the best of it and I'll tell you why. Uh, first thing is that, uh, you know, we keep these guys uh, in paddocks. Um, you know, a lot of horses are kept in paddocks and stalls. Uh, we don't all have the option to have some huge piece of land or even just one horse or something like that. And you only need a little bit of land. Uh, but for every horse, I think it goes, you need an acre. That's a lot of land. And even at that, there's no chance that they wouldn't just burn through every piece of grass out there, just turn to, turn to mud. I think maybe it's two acres per horse because uh, they'll just eat it down to nothing. And then when it gets wet, especially here on the west coast of BC, uh, it turns into mud, lots of it. And uh, it doesn't take much time at all. Horses are voracious eaters. Um, you know, they never stop. They, they only sleep for an hour or two of the day in total. Um, so what are you gonna do? So now we have, to, we have to feed them. We have to figure out a way to feed them. And the way we do it is with hay bags. Let me grab some hay bags here. Uh, let's see, we've got that guy. Just giving you guys a selection to look at what we're doing around here. These, these, these. Let's grab this one. All right, so. <laughs> oh. As you can see, we have a lot of hay bags. We use hay bags every single day. Our horses are fed here as best as we can. 24 7 they uh, they don't go out without hay uh, very often at all I mean when they're in the arena obviously they're not eating but in theory they wouldn't be eating anyways because they're exercising they'd just be fighting over food if it was a whole bunch of horses um, so they get some play time they get some exercise time and the rest of their life which is pretty much another 20 hours of their world um, they're eating drinking and sleeping sometimes they nap in the arena actually uh, off in their paddocks and, and milling around with their buddies and stuff like that. So, but we got to be able to feed them and we can't be out all the time. I've talked about hay bags before. I'll put a link again below. Uh, I talked about the placement of hay bags just uh, not too long ago. I'll put a link below for that. Um, but now we're going to talk about why we use hay bags again. I sort of want to cover it one more time. Um, uh, I know I've already talked about it, but I'm also going to talk about types of hay bags and what you might want to buy, uh, which is sort of the best bang for your buck or your, your best ROI, return on investment, or your best purchase that you could make for your horse, for your wallet, uh, if you're buying hay bags. So uh, first things first, we'll go with one, this nice purple one here. Now, hay bags have uh, all kinds of different materials. Uh, I guess you can see that. This is sort of a, here. Right down here. So it's sort of a nylon, plasticky sort of deal. Um, pretty mildew resistant. These things don't go bad. I mean, I don't remember the last time I used this. This is generally what I would use for a trailer uh, because um, it's easy to get to. They got big holes, as you can see, big holes for the hay to come out, for the horses to chew on it. Um, 
in comparison to all the other ones that we use. So uh, it's probably about a two inch, maybe a two inch hole there. Uh, very useful, good for trailers, easy for the horses to get to, and um, holds a lot. They, they come out pretty big. Hay bags are usually closed on the bottom. This one's not completely closed, but mostly. Uh, and then they draw up with a drawstring and you hang them. Okay, so I would use this for a trailer bag. I wouldn't use this in um, a paddock or a stall unless the horse had zero experience with hay bags. You put in the small hold ones, the smaller hold ones, and it just sort of drives them nuts. They, they, they get a little bit stressed out. They manage it, um, but you can start them off with a nice bigger one um, to, to reduce the stress. You'd actually be really good to put them in with another horse that knows how to use hay bags because they actually have to figure out how to use them. Uh, it's not just some weird intuition. Hey, it's a hay bag, you know, oh, they just don't do that. So, uh, you know, help them out, provide them with something big first, go little later. Uh, talking about uh, the size of hay bag, I mean, depending on how long you're gone for, how long you don't want to come back and feed uh, for, it will change your, the size of the hay bag. But then you're down to quality because quality is everything with hay bags. I don't really care about size that much. Uh, I mean a little bit when it comes down to whether you want to hang around uh, and feed every, I don't know, six hours or eight hours or something or 12 hours or if you want to feed once a day uh, depending on the size of the hay bag you can leave it for a whole day or more depending on how many horses are eating from one hay bag. So uh, we have, these are really popular ones here. Um, locally they're the same deal they've got well same deal they're closed on the bottom draw a string up top um, i'm going to talk about this in a second uh, but a small hole very small hole hay bags one inch these are one inch we use one inch uh, nothing smaller nothing bigger works great horses have been using these for years but speaking of years um, let's talk about one more real quick before i get to that we also have very large ones as you can see, the very big, big bag. Uh, it holds almost a bale. Right. Closed on the bottom a little differently, no piece of metal. This is more sewn together bottom. And then, uh, yeah, drawstring up top. Bam, hay goes in there. Close it up, hang it. Sort of deal. Let's talk. Okay, we've talked about size. We've talked about... Uh, how big the holes are that the hay can come out. These are one inch, but it almost seems a little smaller than this one inch. So keep that in uh, keep that in mind when you're considering what you buy. One inch doesn't mean the same thing to to everybody. I don't know if you can see. It. Anyways, um, let's talk quality and why we want to talk quality. We want to talk quality of hay bags because um, hay bags break. You're, we we'll fix them almost every day here, almost. Uh, especially with the ones that we bought. Uh, to give them a chance, to give them a try. Uh, we're always willing to try out hay bags to see if they're any good uh, because they can be expensive. But I tell you, the cheaper ones are the most expensive because when they do break, the horses just break them right out, uh, open, and uh, then they eat all the hay. And then you got two problems. One, you run out of hay. And two, the horses run out of hay. So, you know, then they go hungry for the next however many hours. You might not be watching because you have an expectation that the hay bag that you just finished filling up is supposed to last, say, six hours. And you got two. So for four more hours that you're not checking up on them um, because they drained it because they opened a hole, uh, you're losing money and they're losing uh, you know, health. And I'll discuss that. Maybe in another video we'll start talking about the stomach and the intestines and how the uh, digestive process works for a horse. For now, uh, we'll go on the assumption that horses should be eating all the time. Uh, that's why we're using these kinds of things to keep them with something to nibble on. This, the idea is hay bags allow the horses to nibble all the time. So we have, last but not least, this one here. Um, this bag is about that big. It's a pretty normal hanging bag. Uh, it's been around, we've had this thing for probably four years. So we're talking quality now. We're talking quality and why quality is important. And we've had this thing for four years easily. I'm sure of it. I got another one somewhere. Um, we have two. We still have them. 
four years later. Uh, as you can see, this one has been mended, you know, a couple of times. Um, still has the original drawstring. This is original, folks. Four years in. Barely... There, there's a fray right there. Oh, that's too out of focus. Anyways. Barely uh, worn out. Just two holes. Four years. Cost 60 bucks. 60 for a hanging bag. That's expensive. That is pricey for a hay bag. Uh, compared to the, some of the competition. For example, these purple ones. Or red ones or whatever. 30 bucks or something. Not the original drawstring. In fact, they very quickly, this is reasonably new. It's only a few months old. Very quickly turns into this garbage. Sorry guys, if you're watching this, the, the company that makes these things, this is absolute garbage, garbage. This is only a few months old, this bag. This is not that old, not very old. Under the same circumstances, as this bag. Completely same circumstances. No different. Same paddock, same horses. We switch them out. Nobody gets any deferential. Nobody gets some kind of special hay bag only. Other thing. Look at this. This one's not that old, but maybe it's a year old. Look at this thing. <laughs> it is practically more Twine. Hey, and we'll, we'll talk about how to fix hay bags soon because you're going to be doing it no matter what. No matter which ones you buy. But look at this thing. This is some form of ridiculousness and I bet there's another hole in here somewhere already. And you're constantly fixing the ones uh, that you've already fixed because they just sort of peel through the twine like this sooner or later even though you tie it on tight. This one's done pretty good. I think Jen did that. Nice job. Um, but just a mess. Still works. We use it. I've had to replace a drawstring with this nylon, no, nylon, what is it? Poly, poly, polyester, poly, poly, something or other, I can't remember now. Uh, string, this one busted, just to prove, it's not just one of these guys, it's both of them. Garbage drawstring, garbage. And then, see the reason this is an issue is you go to pull it open, and it gets, it gets bound up and you can't pull it open because this black part, I'm telling you, drawstring is very important. Any hay bag manuf... I, oh, bear's in big trouble. Um, see, he's crashing on the gate. It's not working. But um, any manufacturer that's paying attention to this video, <laughs> make good drawstrings, period, please. So, uh, the next manufacturer that we gave a try to, they made big bags, they're local-ish. I think within two days we had holes in this thing. I called them up, I said, your, your, your bags don't last, can I please have my money back? And uh, funny thing, where is it? Oh, right here. So they said, sure, here, take this big piece of twine. Nope, where's it running? Maybe somebody's here. Um, take this big thing of twine. Oh yeah. I wouldn't even be bothered. Just, we got lots of baling twine here. You can fix anything with it. Again, holes everywhere. Um, new drawstring. This is not old. Less than a year old. Still use it though. Take our chances with it. But, and here's the end of my talk about hay bags and why quality is important. Every one of those bags is broken open. Every time they've broken open, all the hay is just taken right out. And it's gone before we, we sort of realize. It might happen at nighttime um, or during the day. I might see it, might notice, hey, those guys are <laughs> going through a lot of hay. Um, well, the bag's emptier than you expect. You start to gauge these things. I know this talk is getting a little long, but bear with me. This bag is four years old. It's got four at least four years old it's got two repairs original drawstring cost 60 bucks this one bigger bag you think hey cool bigger bag 40 it was a deal there was a deal going on i thought sure why not 40 50 bucks i can't remember um 
The only reason I actually was sort of inspired to go buy more of these is because I lost one of these to the neighbor's dog that took it away. We got it back um, and I needed more. I just wanted more. So we bought more. Now, it's not to say these ones are impervious. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's two repairs in that one. Uh, we've been using them. No breaks in this one so far. Uh, I asked them if they've changed their material at all and they said, nope, same material. You know, but um, one of them has one small rip. And I think I bought them a few weeks back. Um, drawstrings are good. They made them longer. Um, so, to finish off this whole video, quality is truly everything with these things. It will drive you nuts when you're running out of hay because they keep your horses keep opening up the hay bags and taking all your hay out. And it's not really good for them. They shouldn't really be binging uh, and then running out. It's it, They should be grazing a lot. We talk about why they do that. I might cover this really in detail later, but another video, but they should be doing what they're normally doing if they could be not stuck in the environment that we are putting them in so that we can enjoy them and they can enjoy a life um, with us uh, in paddocks uh, that, that aren't growing grass in them. Uh, we have to provide that. So to do that, we need to do that at a regular interval, uh, if not all the time. And that's hard to do. And not everybody can keep on doing it because sometimes horses just, you know, make a mess of things. Um, but if, and again, this isn't sponsored, but I would absolutely recommend these things. The, uh, they're, they're great, absolutely fantastic hay bags. Um, they last forever, four years on, and there's only two repairs in them, original drawstring. That means a lot uh, from, from a horse boarding and horse owning perspective. These ones are called a nag bag. Uh, they're made here in BC. Um, I met the people, they're family run business too, which is kind of nice to hear. Uh, they make them, they've been making them for a long time now. Can't buy them in very many places. So when we went to this event, we were able to buy some and let them know what we thought of them. And they were very happy about that. And we were very happy to tell them that. Uh, any products out there that we like, absolutely, we're all over. And we'll tell people anything we don't like, <laughs> probably going to say something. Uh, as it goes, people usually talk about the things they don't like more than the things that they actually like. And uh, I want to say definitely these are, these are a great bag to use. They, they are more expensive from the get-go, but they are cheaper in the long run because you don't have to buy two or three of the $30 ones that are just gonna break on you anyways and get ripped open and the hay's gonna run out and your horse can run out. You're gonna spend more money on hay rather than spend the original 50 to 60 bucks on a good hay net. Um, and this applies obviously to a lot of things in life. That's why people buy better cars or they buy better things because they last longer, it's better quality. So we'll see how these new ones do. I'm very hopeful. Um, they come, these ones are already getting a little used, but you know, they start out super shiny green <laughs> um, and they've changed up the drawstrings a little bit longer. It's nice to see. And they've, uh, they've added these little clippy things, little black clippy things rather than a big knot. I kind of like that. Um, hoping the little black clippy thing doesn't break. So, but they come up real shiny and they fold up real nice when you take them home, you just put them in a the bag, but um, 50, 60 bucks or something. Definitely worth it. Definitely. Um, Highly recommended for hay bags. Uh, again, though, I mean, they come in different sizes of holes too. So you don't have to get these little one inch things. You can get one and a half, two inch, um, and different size of bags. Get tiny little bags or really huge bags that can actually, I think they've got ones that even fit a, a round bale. So it's impressive. Um, you don't want to get holes in that. Otherwise you're going to run out of hay in no time. The point is that the horse is not supposed to be eating a big pile of hay all at once. They're supposed to be eating, you know, a bit at a time, just grace. So hopefully this video has been informative. Why we use hay bags, the quality of hay bags, what type of hay bags, the problems you're going to have with hay bags. <sighs> hopefully you enjoy the entertainment in the background. They're not doing too much. They're kind of, they've been playing around for a bit. So I'll take them in. Looks like uh, bears causes some trouble. So I'll go uh, play with him a little bit too. and. See you guys again soon. Thanks for watching this super long video about hay bags. Hopefully it's the last one I do for a little while outside of talking about maybe health for horses. Um, 
and why they eat a particular way and how their digestive system works, if you care. <laughs> Biology of horses 101. But um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I will link the other two videos that will hopefully augment this particular amount of uh, information. So thanks for watching and uh, yeah, see you guys again soon.